It's time for Lo-Fi Science Class with Mr. Hedgepeth of the Amoeba People. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the Lo-Fi Science Class with Mr. Hedgepeth of the Amoeba People. That would be me, Mr. Hedgepeth, of the science rock band, the Amoeba People. And uh, we are now beginning lesson four in this series. And lesson four is sort of a continuation of lesson three. Lesson three was all about the planets, but it was mostly about the order of the planets. And we had a song cruising through the solar system. Hope you enjoyed that. And hope, hopefully you got up and danced in that, that video uh, along with me. And uh, that, that was a lot of fun, but um, it's more fun if other people do it as well. Um, and in this video, we're gonna get in a, a little deeper into how people first figured out the order of the planets. It's a little easier now with the technology that we have, but people figured out the order of the planets without satellites being launched into space, without satellites orbiting Earth, without having to go to the moon, uh, without all the, the modern technology we have, like the Voyager space probes, which I mentioned uh, in the last episode as well, which are now leaving the solar system. So how did people figure out the order of the planets? Well. Fortunately today, I've got some props that I think will help us out. Uh, the guitar is not one of them, but the guitar will be coming back later for a song about all of this stuff we're learning in this episode. Okay, so, um, but uh, but here's here's the prop I wanna draw your attention to. Uh, it is Albert Einstein on a fly swatter. I've taped him to a fly swatter. Again, lo-fi science class. This is as high tech as it gets here. And, um, and he's gonna help me demonstrate um, the, the, the story of how we figured all of this out. Okay, so, uh, so come with me now on, on a journey back in time to when people looked up at the stars and really didn't even know what the stars were and we didn't even know the correct order of the stars and planets. Um, and let's go back to a time where we didn't even really know what planets were. Okay, so come with me. Um, I'm gonna put my feet up actually, uh, so I can demonstrate this. It's a little more comfy that way. All right, so Einstein, here, here he goes, I'm on a flash water. Hopefully you guys can uh, see that okay? Yeah, yeah, okay, good. All right, so, um, so in ancient times, uh, people would observe the sky at night and they would notice that stars would kind of follow a consistent pattern over the course of the evening. They'd move across the sky, east to west, um, and and, and you could, over the year, develop a sense of where these stars were gonna be, you know, and uh, there was something strange that would happen though. There were certain stars that when they would move across the sky like this, they didn't just simply move in consistent patterns, they moved in these strange loop-de-loop -loop patterns. Now, I'm not talking about like, you know, in the course of an, a single evening, they moved in a loop-de-loop. -loop. I mean, it, when you tracked them over time, uh, you would notice that they, they didn't just simply move across the way other stars did. They would move and they'd do this, this loop. And people didn't know why. And so the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, uh, who you know have given us a, a, a lot of things and, and sent a lot of things forward into history for us, uh, they, they had a name for these stars, these wandering stars, and they called them planets. That's really what the Greek word for wandering star was, planet. So let's pretend then that Albert Einstein here, now he's not just a star, he's now one of these wandering stars. He's a planet, okay? So he would do stuff like this, again, over time. They, they started keeping track of things. You know, th this was at a point where people really wanted to know what in the world is going on? What does it mean to be on this planet? Uh, what are the laws that govern everything? So, so they would watch these wandering stars, and they would keep track of them over time as they wandered and have these little weird loops that they would do. And a guy named Ptolemy in the second century AD, um, he came up with a model that didn't actually explain why these, these wandering stars did these little loop-de-loops. It was kind of a mystery, but he did develop a model of the solar system. We now call it the Ptolemaic model. And, uh, and this is my artistic rendering of it. And as you can see, well, I don't know if you can see or not, it's, it's a little hard to see, but look what's right at the center of basically not the solar system because they didn't even call it a solar system because Earth was at the center of it. This was the universe to them. This was everything that existed. 
it began with earth and everything moved outward. Now look at this, a really interesting pattern here. We've got earth and then the, the next object orbiting earth would have been the moon. Then you have Mercury, Venus, and then way out here, you got the sun, okay? Then Mars, and then Jupiter, and then Saturn. Remember, telescopes were not around then. Those wouldn't be invented till Galileo's time, 1600s. And so you couldn't really see beyond Saturn. You knew there were stars. They would call these like the fixed stars. But as far as these wandering stars, these planets, that, that was as far as you could see, Saturn. So, so we had Earth at the center. By the way, this is the Ptolemaic model. That's a Ptolemaic for Ptolemy. And now we refer to it as the geocentric, geocentric model, meaning Earth at the center, okay? Ptolemy, I don't think, would have called it geocentric. Uh, maybe he did, I don't know. But um, I think that's more of a retroactive term that we've used. Okay, so, um, so, so you have this, and, and I often wonder, you know, like, you know, now with the order of the planets that we have nowadays, we say, you know, my very educated mother just served us nine pizzas back when Pluto was still a planet. That's how you remember the order of the planets. Uh, and then once Pluto got dumped, people said, my very educated mother just served us nachos. Um, so that's a, you know, mnemonic device to help remember the order of the planets. And I, and I wondered, um, you know, this is the order of the planets in Ptolemy's time. I was like, I wonder what they, they use. This was my idea of how they might have remembered the order. Um, monkeys make very sad Michael Jackson songs. What do you think? It's plausible. Except for the fact that Michael Jackson, you know, was not alive during that time. So, um, but still, monkeys make very sad Michael Jackson songs. You know, it, it could very well be. Those are the sounds that monkeys are making. They're, they're trying to emulate the king of pop. We don't know. There are so many mysteries in science, aren't there? Okay, so, so what happened, though? How, how did things go from that, where the Earth is at the center of everything? There's this, this order of planets that lasted for a very, 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 very long time. Ptolemy's model of the universe. Uh, and it even made predictions that, that were accurate. It, it couldn't predict everything because it wasn't 100% accurate, but it predicted a lot of things. So a lot of people look at that and they're like, oh my gosh, that's what an idiot, you know, but he wasn't an idiot. He was, he was a really brilliant guy. So how did somebody figure out that the earth was not at the center of everything? Well, that was a brilliant man named Nicholas Copernicus. And here's what he did. So you got your Einstein, right? I'm sorry. Mars, planet, and it, whatever you want to call him right now. He, he's one of the wandering stars, right? And Copernicus is looking at this. This is now in the 1500s, okay? So this is a long time after Ptolemy, which was the second century, you know, in the 100s AD. So um, he, he's, he's noticing that these loop-de-loops, why are they there? Why are these things doing loop-de-loops? And he wonders, what if... They're not going around us, which is what Ptolemy thought. We're here, everything's going around us. What if those loops are because they're orbiting something in our system? And so, let me demonstrate with what I'm gonna use as the sun, a Tyrannosaurus Rex at the end of a PVC pipe. Okay, so let's say this T-Rex is our sun, right? So, so Copernicus is like, here, here's what happens, okay? You've got, the sun's up during the day, so it goes across the sky, okay. But then at night, we don't see it. It's down there somewhere, but we do see the planets. And if they are orbiting like this over time, maybe they're orbiting the sun and we just can't see it because the sun's, it's nighttime, sun's underneath so to speak, underneath. I mean, you know, in space, uh, we don't really use terms like underneath, but out of view, we'll say, okay? So if Mars is doing this, Jupiter also does that too. It does one of those loop-de-loops. So does Saturn, so does Venus, okay? So what's happening here? What if, and then he got the idea, he said, what if I move the sun to the center of this system and then recalculate all the orbits. Will it make sense? And he became obsessed with this idea and he did all of the math, incredibly complicated math. But as he did, he discovered that, oh my gosh, everything fell into place. Everything made sense. He did this mathematically speaking and with his own curiosity. Now, 
like most things, and in fact, uh, like our pal Albert Einstein here, he had some great ideas, but they had to be proved with observational evidence. And he needed people like, uh, like Edwin Hubble to prove his stuff, okay? Well, same thing with Copernicus. These ideas kind of grabbed hold of the scientists of those days, and, um, but there was one guy who was convinced that this was true and he was gonna provide the observational evidence. And his name, I've already mentioned it, was Galileo. Now, Galileo is the dude who turned that telescope to the heavens once the telescope essentially had been invent invented. Um, and he built his own telescopes as well. And he's the one who began observing things like Jupiter and the moon and all, and all sorts of things that people had never even seen before. And what he found was not only was Copernicus, was Copernicus right, he was mega right. That's a new scientific term, by the way, mega right. Actually, it's it's not mega right. It's just it's just it's correct when there is very convincing observational evidence to back up a what is essentially a mathematical or you know theoretical idea. And so now you had you had Copernicus calculating the whole thing, and then you now had Galileo observing it and saying, here's why Copernicus was right. And now, of course, we send a satellite up into space. We're like, oh yeah, Copernicus was right. It's pretty easy to see now. We can see suns at the center. Everything goes around the sun. And uh, we got Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and well, everything beyond Neptune. Let's go ahead and just say it, Pluto. We don't want to leave Pluto out of the loop too much. Okay, so um, but uh, so, so to commemorate this amazing discovery, we're going to do a song called Heliocentric because that's what Copernicus's model is called. Okay, let me show that one to you. That's, uh, there we go. That's the one we know and love, right? With the uh, sun at the center. Okay, now again, because they didn't have high, te high powered telescopes, you know, you didn't know that uh, Uranus, excuse me, Uranus and Neptune <laughs> existed then. It took a little bit longer, better technology for that to happen. Certainly better technology than Einstein on a fly swatter. Once upon a time in the second century, there was a very smart man and his name was Ptolemy. He developed the model of the universe with an object in the center called planet Earth. It made a lot of sense to the people at the time Cause the earth stood still while stars moved across the sky At least it's how we've seen for many years to come But in 1543, it came undone Along came Nicholas Copernicus The man was a bona fide genius He said, judging by my calculations, I suspect That the Ptolemaic model is no longer correct It's time to get heliocentric It's a new perspective now With the sun in the middle, it all makes sense It helps solve the riddle, it's time to get heliocentric, no, you just can't reject it now. With the sun in the center, it all makes sense. It's so much better. It's so much better. So much better. Oh, 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 oh. After Copernicus had come and gone, Galileo Galilei came rolling along. He built himself a telescope and aimed it at the sky. When he pointed it at Jupiter, he said, Oh my. He saw four moons going round and round. He knew that he was witnessing something profound. If other planets had moons, then Copernicus was right. It was time for the old way to say goodnight. It's time to get heliocentric. It's a new perspective now. With the sun in the middle, it all makes sense. It helps solve the real It's time to get heliocentric. No, you just can't reject it now. With the sun in the center, it all makes sense. It's so much better. So much better, so much better. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, there you have it, heliocentric. And um, I want to mention right now that uh, we actually have a video of that song, an animated video done by an incredible animator, a good friend of ours, Mike McCraw. Uh, he's an, an animator on uh, Bob's Burgers, and he's done uh, tons of hip hop videos. And uh, I mean, he's the guy is just crazy talented. And uh, he also has a sister who is a teacher, and so he really loves education. And uh, and uh, he started collaborating with us uh, a short while ago. And um, our first collaboration is uh, the video that I'm going to put a link to in the description below, so you can watch uh, what we've been working on. And uh, the first thing was this video for Heliocentric. So check it out. 
and uh, enjoy. And in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed um, lesson four of the lo-fi science class with Mr. Hedgepeth of the Amoeba people. And uh, I will see you again in lesson five. Until then, everybody, onward!